Hello. In this video, we are going to derive expressions for the rate of unimolecular reactions in the gas phase that also happen to possess an inert gas. We are representing our reactive molecule as A. So in one step of the mechanism, two molecules of the reactive gas A collide and form a reactive complex, red A star, and one molecule that is not activated. In the forward direction, the rate constant is going to be K1, and the reverse reaction, where the activated complex crashes into a uh, non-reactive molecule and deactivate to form two deactivated A's, has the rate constant K2. In the second step of the mechanism, the activated complex red A star is converted into product with a rate constant of K3. And we assume that this reaction proceeds only in one direction. So far, the scheme is entirely identical to the one that we worked at earlier in this video here which I refer you to. A new wrinkle is this step that we've written on top where the reactive molecule A will collide with a molecule of inert gas, which is shown here as a green M. And in the process, it converts A into the activated complex red A star and leaves the inert gas as it was before. The forward reaction occurs with a rate constant of K4, and the collisional deactivation of the uh, reactive complex with the inert gas has a rate constant of K5. We will now proceed to uh, derive certain expressions for the rate of reaction. Note that the numbering system here is somewhat non-standard so that we can keep the expressions that we've already derived for the simple case with no inner gas and easily compare them with the new results that we're going to get with the inner gas. The first case we will examine, case one, is the case where we define the rate constants K1 and K2 to be identically zero. What this means in practice is that this reaction here does not occur at all, or it occurs with such low frequency that we can ignore it. What we're saying effectively is that the only way that we can convert the reactive molecule A into the activated complex A star is collision with the inert gas molecule. We proceed by writing an expression for the change in the concentration of red A star, the activated complex. So we see that we can form A star by the reaction of A and M with rate constant K4. So we have the positive K4 times the concentration of A times the concentration of M. We have two different ways of reducing the concentration of A star. One way is the collisional deactivation of a star reacting with M and it with a rate constant K5. So we have this minus K5 times A star times M. That's this process. And also the conversion of A star into the product P, which depends upon the concentration of A star and has the rate constant K3. The next stop, next step is to apply the steady state approximation. We set this change in concentration equal to zero. Rearranging this expression, we get that K4 times the concentration of A times the concentration of M is equal to K5 times the concentration of A star times the concentration of M plus K3 
times the concentration of A star. Our next step would be to factor out the concentration of A star on the right hand side. And we get that K4 times the concentration of A times the concentration of M is equal to the concentration of A star times the quantity K5 times the concentration of M plus K3. So we have the following expression for the concentration of A star. What we are trying to get is an expression for the rate of formation of the product P. And we know from this final step that the rate of formation of P is K3 times the concentration of A star. And since we have an expression for A star, we can write down an expression for the overall rate of the reaction, the rate of formation of the product P. So we get the expression we have here in the orange box that the rate is equal to K3 times K4 times the concentration of A times the concentration of the inert gas divided by K5 times the concentration of M, the inert gas, plus K3. Now let us assume a special case within this special case. And that is the situation where our inert gas, unbeknownst to us, turns out to be exactly more of the reactive gas A. So essentially we're assuming that M in our expression is nothing more than the reactive gas in blue A. What would that give us for our rate of reaction? Well, if the rate of A plus M has a rate constant K4 and A plus A is K1, that tells us in our expression that we can replace K4 by K1 because M turns out to be no other than A. And then for the collisional deactivation of M with A star, which we had previously believed to be K5 in our expression, would actually turn out to be K2. So if we take our rate, rate uh, reaction, uh, reaction rate expression, we replace M with A, we replace K4 by K1, and replace K5 by K2, what would that give us? We would get that the rate is now K3 times K1 times the concentration of A squared divided by K2 times the concentration of A plus K3. And we would notice something that by comparison with our previous video, this is exactly the same rate that we got for a unimolecular reaction in the gas phase with no inert gas. Is that a surprise? No, it shouldn't be, because if it turns out that our inner gas was just a reactive gas to begin with, then it makes sense that the expression we derived should uh, be converted into the expression that we had already previously derived. For another special situation, let us now assume that the concentration of the inner gas is very, very large. And by large, we mean that K5 times M is much greater than K3. If that is true, then we can replace the denominator K5 times concentration of M plus K3 simply by K5 times the concentration of M. With that assumption for the denominator, we get that the new rate is equal to K3 times K4 times the concentration of A times the concentration of M divided by K5 times the concentration of M. But we notice that we have the concentration of M in both the numerator and the denominator, so we can cancel that out. And you get a simplified expression for the rate. The rate becomes K3 times K4 times the concentration of A divided by K5. Two things to notice. One is that when the concentration of the inner gas M is very large, it disappears from the expression. So now the rate does not depend upon the actual concentration of M once it becomes sufficiently large. The second is that the rate now is entirely linear in the reactive gas A. For the final expression that we are going to derive in this part one video, 
we are going to look at the case where the concentration of the inner gas M is now very low. And by very low, we mean that K5 times M is much less than K3. With this assumption, we can replace the expression in the denominator simply by K3. We also notice that we can cancel the rate constant K3 from the numerator and the denominator to get our final expression for the rate in the case where the concentration of M is sufficiently low. Now we get that the rate is equal to K4 times the concentration of A times the concentration of M. So it is first order in A and first order in M. So overall in the reacting gases, reactant and inert gases, we have what appears to be a second order reaction. Somewhat surprisingly, the rate constant K3, the rate of conversion of the activated complex A star into product, does not appear in the rate, uh, the rate law that we have here. Now, it also makes sense because we assumed that K5 times M is much less than K3. And one physical interpretation that we can make upon that is that we have a very low concentration of the reacting gas M. But another way to uh, interpret this is that instead of K5 times M being much less than K3, we can think of it as K3 being much larger than this expression. When K3 is very large, this, is the, this rate constant of conversion of the activated complex to product is sufficiently large, then it turns out that, that particular rate, it's not the slow step anymore, so it's not rate limiting, so it does not appear in the uh, rate law expression, and that therefore makes sense. I thank you very much for your attention for this part one. I ask your indulgence to wait for the conclusion of part two to come sometime later. As always, have a good one.